Hi, I'm Jeff Marsacci, the Plain English Attorney, and you're at the number one place to get simple answers to complex questions. We cover topics for attorneys, financial advisors, and the general public around estate and Medicaid planning, as well as some best practices for professionals. Our mission is to dispel myths, provide you some peace of mind, and hopefully have some fun along the way. Hi, Jeff Marsacci, the Plain English Attorney, and today I'm going to just comment on a story that's kind of been floating around the news, and in particular Reddit and a couple of other places. Uh, and it's a, the case of a Canadian businessman who's paying $50,000 a month in support to a woman he wasn't married to. And people are going crazy all over the place. It's unfair. And uh, how, you know, he, they didn't commingle accounts and she had her own home and her own address. So, you know, how can you possibly come to this conclusion that he owes her money and he owes her support? They never got married. Okay. I honestly, I don't have that much sympathy uh, in this case because this guy obviously was making an awful lot of money. And I guess you have to start with the purpose of the law. The purpose of the law, and again, it's Canadian, uh, so it's not in North Carolina where I'm a licensed attorney. So just take this as regular commentary from someone who just happens to know a little bit more about the law, not as legal advice. Uh, the purpose of the law is so that someone can't make this promise. Hey, we're going to live together. I'll take care of you. I'll supply the money, but you drop everything and we're going to have an actual relationship where there's sex involved. So I'm going to take care of these things. And then several years go by and then it's now nah, I'm done. Well, wait a minute. I relied on the fact that you were going to be taking care of me. I, you know, I didn't have a job. I was taking care of your home. And, well, nope, nope. That's it. That's it. Go. Okay. That's where, uh, in this jurisdiction up in Canada, if the relationship was for three years or more, you're, quote, a common law married, at least in terms of support. So what people are all outraged about is that this gentleman obviously hadn't intended to marry her, at least not until uh, many years later. And I'm hoping I'm getting the number right. I didn't write it down, but this was... I believe like 2007 or so uh, that the relationship was really underway. So that's like 13 years. So what did he do right that everybody seems to be latching on to to say this is unfair? He obviously didn't mean to support her. Well, they kept their accounts separate. Okay, and we'll come back to that. And they had separate residences. She had her own home. How can you say they cohabitated? All right, this is one of those things where they have to look at all of the different factors. So let's go through that. Did she have her own residence? Yes, but obviously they were sleeping over with each other quite a bit. Uh, and he paid off her mortgage for her. He paid that off. So that's not, he took that responsibility and paid that off. Well, why did he do that? Uh, if, you know, if they're gonna keep their accounts separate, why did he do that? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna get to that. So yeah, they did keep their accounts separate, but in keeping those accounts separate, he also apparently, again, apparently, she quit her job and she needed money. So even though she had her separate account, he was giving her money every month. Okay, so he didn't put her name on the account, but he was giving her money every single month. So he paid off her house and he was giving her money every month. So, okay, what else did he do? In other words, what did he do wrong that led the court to conclude, yes, he owes this support. Now, it was $50,000 a month 
for life, but an appeals court cut that back to a 10-year period. In other words, it was after that third year, it was a 10-year relationship. He's going to support for about an equal time. So, all right. So she quit her job, and he was fine with that. They vacationed together, and he even paid for a lot of things for her kids, not their kids together, her children. So he was paying for all these things. He gave her a seven and a half carat diamond ring. And here's the big one. And this is really one of the reasons why I really don't have an awful lot of sympathy for this guy. He's introducing her around using his last name. Okay, but then he's claiming, oh, well, we weren't really married. But he's he gave her his last name, and he was introducing her using his last name. Obviously, giving the impression they were married. So, with all of those factors, how do you conclude that, okay, he supported her for 13 years. She quit her job to be available. Uh, he paid off her mortgage. He was giving her money every month. How is this not her dropping everything and going to be available for him? And it's not a support co co cohabitation situation. Look, he entered this. He did this. He voluntarily. Uh, so, you know, what didn't he do? is probably another question. He didn't have any kind of disclosures or uh, agreements or disclaimers stating, hey, we're both adults, we're agreeing, this isn't a cohabitation agreement. You know, this, we're, this is not a cohabitation situation. We're just dating and that's it. There was nothing like that in place. He shouldn't have had her quit her job. Hey, if he had enough money and he was in business and he was able that they ordered fifty thousand dollars a month to be reasonable support, he could have gotten her a job so that she was receiving this income, but she was working on her own. But as it is, that's thirteen years of lost job opportunity and experience and advancement where she could have taken over on her own. So yeah, I can, so again, that's a big thing. They could have acknowledged or had an agreement that, hey, he's just giving gifts to her. It's not support. She's agreeing, unquote, under oath, if it's in front of a notary, that this is not in any way support, it's gifts. I don't know how much the court would necessarily buy that if she, was still quitting her job and not doing anything except be available for him. Uh, he, or he should have just never asked her to quit her job in the first place. So they were, these are things that all go into these factors. So yeah, the, the whole uh, internet and the blogosphere and everything, everybody could yell and scream and complain, oh, this isn't right, it's not fair, they had separate accounts and they had to... I hear this stuff all the time in, and this is how I kind of come to this, came to talk about this, in estate planning and in Medicaid planning, and it's, well, the Medicaid rules say you have to have less than $2,000, so I just gave everything away. How, how am I supposed, I didn't have that money anymore. I gave it to my kids and they spent it, so how can you expect Medicaid, you have to take care of me. How, do you, how can you expect me to get that money back? I already gave it away. Well, the rules say you don't give it away. Oh, estate planning. A couple doesn't decides they're not going to get married. They're just going to live together. Fine. And then the guy says, okay, well, I will support you, woman. And I'm just using that as an example. It could be the other way around. Uh, you kind of be the stay-at-home person, but we're not going to get married. I'm going to support you. We're going to take care of, you know, I'll take care of you. And... This is it. He states, when I die, I want you to get everything. Doesn't do a will. Doesn't do a power of attorney. He gets sick. He's suddenly in the hospital. He's in a coma for three months. Um, 
and the next of kin sweeps in. They start making medical decisions. I've been living with them for 20 years. I should be making those decisions. Well, no, because the law says you don't. The next of kin does unless you have the documents. You gotta have a health care power of attorney. And then guy dies. That's it. The house is in his name. He's deceased. It goes to the next of kin because he didn't have a will. You're out on the street. But I have, I have no savings of my own. I was committed to him for 20 years. Well, look, you didn't take care of what you needed to take care of. Um, in particular, on a lot of these threads that, that are out there, it's called, quote, the manosphere. It's where uh, men are standing up and wanting to be more masculine, be more independent. And it's, they're being taken advantage of, in a lot of cases, by women, by a much, not an, necessarily an equality feminism, but what they call third wave or fourth wave or whatever it is. The complaining is that this is just not fair to men. See how this law is bad for men. And there are some cases out there that legitimately are bad for men, just as there are a lot of instances and in institutions where it's not good for women. Uh, just an example for men. Uh, child custody. It would be ridiculous for someone to say that in practice, men are just as likely to get full custody of their children as a woman. It's that's just not the case. But when there are all of these things that are available, where if a man does not want to get married, wants to keep things separate, does not want to be considered on the hook for support and for cohabitation. Look, those documents, those strategies, they're out there. All this guy had to do was talk with an attorney who knew what they were doing and get things set up the right way. He used folk remedies. Oh, well, if I keep my account separate and we keep, actually, she keeps her residence, we're not cohabitating. Not true. It's not true you got to have the right documentation. So, again, just some commentary on that case that just seems to be going out there. Uh, and I hope this helps people realize, look, you don't have to conform to what society says is the standard. You go, you live your life the way you want to live your life, but you need to be strong and capable. And part of that in being strong, capable, and independent is making sure you've got the legal stuff sewn up. So make sure that you're getting things done and documented the right way. In the latter example that I gave, look, if you're going to end up living together and the intention is, yes, I want this partner to be able to handle medical and financial things. If I become disabled, I want them to inherit. When I pass on, just telling them, yeah, I want you to inherit everything. That's not what the law says. So know the law or talk to an attorney so you understand what the law says. And then get the documentation set up so things go the way you want, as opposed to the default law that says, if you don't handle it the right way, here's what's going to happen. So I hope you got some good information out of that. If you're you know, thinking about things with your life, how you're handling things, and especially in the estate area where this is where I have been living for the last 25 years is in the estate planning and even the Medicaid planning realm. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions. Go ahead and put them into the comments below or message us. Um, and as always, as a plaintiff and attorney, I always tell you, look, stay safe, plan ahead, and enjoy life. We hope you found that information useful and easy to understand. To keep getting this great information, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. To get even more information more quickly, follow the links below to some of our free, no-obligation programs.